Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Misericordia University. It's wonderful to have you all today. Before we begin, let's please bow our heads in a moment of silence for the people of Ukraine. Thank you. I cannot begin to express how truly grateful I am to participate in today's celebration, not simply to offer a few welcoming remarks, but more importantly, to see our students and endowed scholarship benefactors, benefactors gathered as one. It is a remarkable vantage point, one which, I believe, speaks to the inherent importance of having faith. By attending Misericordia, our students and parents have placed their faith and our capabilities to present a values-laden educational experience that successfully prepares those who attend for the next phase in life following the graduation. Furthermore, it illustrates the faith our endowed scholarship benefactors maintain for Ms. Accordia and our students. By sharing their financial resources with us and our students, benefactors are telling students they have made a wise decision to come here and via their endowed scholarships are encouraging you, our students, to chase your unique dreams and hopes confidently and with conviction. Today is to celebrate gratitude. It isn't by chance that you are together this morning. Rather, it is because you share a common understanding that higher education is the gateway to a world of possibility. By far the greatest good we can do is to support and invest in people. And who better than our students? The support we receive empowers Misericordia to plan and proceed with confidence and, it, and enables us to focus our attention on the university's most treasured asset, our students. Misericordia has awarded more than $1 million in endowed and named scholarships in this current academic year. We can do so because we have exceptional benefactors like you who understand that giving above and beyond enables greatness to occur. Students, please engage with your benefactors, not only to thank them, but to help them learn a little bit more about you and why you chose Misericordia. Their sacrifice and thoughtfulness have made it possible for you to study at this remarkable institution and help to alleviate some of the financial burden for you and your family. Remember, they are putting their trust and faith in you to love what you do to learn well, and to perform to the absolute best of your abilities. This is a special day for scholarship benefactors as well. We never lose sight that amidst the volume of worthy causes which you can easily merit your investment, you chose to invest in Misericordia and our students. Lives will change because of your commitment to us. Please take the opportunity to peruse the program, which includes snippets of the many thank you letters written by our students. Hearing their success stories and sharing in their thanks are the reasons why we are here today. We have so much to be thankful for. It is time to celebrate gratitude. To get our program started, I welcome Amy Lehart, Vice President for Mission Integration and Student Life, to offer the invocation. Amy. Thanks, Larry. Good morning, everyone. It's so nice to be with everybody, and it's nice to be together, right? <laughs> Can I ask that we all put ourselves in God's presence? Heavenly Father, you have given our recipients, whom we celebrate today, the gift of the ability to acquire knowledge. With such potential to be all that they can be, we rejoice when they strive to their very best to gain true wisdom. I ask that we might know the blessings of your presence here this morning as we honor these young scholars. We humbly ask for such special blessings for all of our benefactors and donors here with us today and those that may be with us virtually. Thank you for their work, for their kindness, and for their generosity to make these scholarships possible. Thank you for the leadership, the intelligence, and the creativity that we all see in these young adults. 
Thank you for their dedicated teachers, mentors, parents, guardians, all who nurture their minds and shaped their character that we know them to be. And thank you for their parents, their friends, their mentors, their teachers, who most importantly supported them, encourages them. Father, it is you who helped them to become who they are. Now we pray that you may help them grow into the men and women and professionals that they can become. We ask that you be with them and strengthen them for whatever their future holds. And may they always know that we are with them. Lead them in the paths that are best for them. Help them fully develop the gifts of mind, body, and spirit that you have given them. Encourage them to make the world a better place for everyone. Guide them to be merciful to their neighbors, citizens committed to service, professionals who show justice, and people who are Misericordia hospital, hospitable. For Misericordia will always show them the way and will guide them in their path. As we prepare to share this meal together, please bless this food and the hands that have prepared it for us. May this meal nourish our body, and may these conversations so important to who we are and to the friends of this university nourish our minds. Amen. Hello, everyone. Uh, for those of you who I haven't met yet, I'm Dan Myers. I'm the uh, uh, 15th president of Miss Recordia University. I'm very, very happy to be here. It's been, uh, it's been an exciting time at the university already and many good things to come. We're working forward on our next strategic plan and many uh, good things are gonna come as we uh, launch into the next year. I am not actually, I, I'm, I'm president, but I haven't even been inaugurated yet. That's still coming. We had, to, we had to postpone it a little bit because of COVID, but I hope you'll uh, come back and be with us uh, for the the inauguration on April 22nd. We're going to have a lot of uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, I will bore you with a speech, though I, I guarantee that. But but later that night we'll be out here in the amphitheater. My band, uh, actually two bands, the faculty band we have here and my band from the old days are going to be playing out here Friday nights. So we hope you'll come and be a part of that. And then many of you will be with us for the trustee gala the next night on Saturday. There's a lot of other opportunities during the course of the inauguration weekend, including a service opportunity on. Saturday morning and a number of other things. So I hope you'll come back and be part of uh, this really exciting year with us. Um, among, among many firsts that I'm experiencing this year uh, is this uh, um, annual scholarship recognition brunch. And it's just an absolute pleasure to be here with you to recognize uh, the contributions that you've made to the lives of our students. Uh, your passionate benefactor uh, orientation uh, combined with the amazing students that we have here at this university really make a really special cocktail. Uh, and, and I just want to uh, thank you for your generosity. Uh, you change lives by what you have given to this university and to, uh, to our students. And we hope that you'll having, you're having an opportunity to share the stories of what that philanthropy has meant to you. I will tell you that I, uh, as a student, was the beneficiary of a couple of scholarships from folks like you, and it totally changed my life. Um, I grew up in poverty, and during my senior year of high school, my dad lost his job. And I had no way of, my parents had no way of helping me college, uh, pay for college. I, when I went to college, my parents gave me $20. That's all they gave me the entire time I was in college. And so if it wasn't for the, um, the uh, scholarships from several people like you, I, I wouldn't be here today. Uh, it's absolutely life-changing what you give. Uh, now I'm getting choked up. Stacy, you did it to me. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just remember, just remembering the impact and recognizing what it did for me. Uh, it's just so absolutely powerful, and I'm just so proud to be part of, of a community like this that really uh, pitches in to help the next generation forward and to really improve their lives. So uh, it's, it's just absolutely wonderful to be with you, and I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, and on behalf of all these students that you have helped. Um, 
Those selfless acts of generosity are what have brought us together today. And uh, those acts have been taking place since the Sisters of Mercy stood their ground and founded Misericordia nearly 98 years ago. So in a couple years, we'll be celebrating the 100th anniversary of Misericordia. And that's another opportunity for you to come and celebrate this wonderful place with us. I hope you'll take advantage of that as well. But the tenets of mercy, service, justice, and hospitality continue continue to inspire us and to guide our actions on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, at many universities, if you went out on the quad and grabbed somebody and said, what's the mission of this university? They probably wouldn't, they'd probably say, I don't know, or maybe to be a good university. That might be the best they could come up with. That is absolutely not the case here, and it's one of the things that brought me here. When I was going through the interview process, I asked people, I said, you know, you talk a lot in your ad about the mission of this place. You talk about the charism. Tell me how you see that happening on the ground in your daily work at this university and everybody had a good answer it wasn't you know it wasn't some vague thing about we're do-gooders they had a real specific story about how that operates in everything that we do at this university and I've felt that every day since I've been here so I, I, I am I just feel so blessed to be in a place that has been formed by those values and I want to thank the, the sisters for all that you've put in to this place over the years you're incredible people you uh, guide us in everything we do every day and we appreciate it so much you 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 make us better uh, with your presence and the ideas and the orientation that you've brought to our work. Thank you so, so much. Um, throughout its history, Misericordia has sought to promote equality and dignity for all through education. The sisters' legacy to ensure access to higher learning is avail and that that's available to all is honored today, and you make a huge commit. Uh, you make a huge contribution to that uh, with your uh, with your gifts and your presence. Each and every single one of those scholarships changes lives, and uh, and it gives students uh, an opportunity to think about how they're going to pay it forward when we get the opportunity to do that. And some of you who are scholarship donors are one are are people who receive scholarships here yourself when you were students and I and I love to see that that legacy being passed on from generation to generation um, what better way to learn about how this works than by hearing the story of the young student mother oops I'm sorry I skipped a page oh jeez <laughs> Stacy I'm gonna put you on hold for just just another second yeah um, each year uh, Miss Recordia University selects one scholarship to represent the special scholarships created and funded by general donors. I'm honored to introduce this year's honored scholarship, the Virginia Donlin Class of 1962 Scholarship. Its benefactor is alumna Virginia Donlin Emershaw, better known to her friends, among who I count myself now, as uh, Ginger. Ginger is one of those alumni whose eyes sparkle when they talk about their time at Miss Recordia. And uh, Mark and I went out to Ohio to visit Ginger, and we had such a great time uh, hearing about her experience her, here at Miss Recordia. She's quick to say she had a wonderful academic experience experience, yet we know Miss Recordia means more to her than just that. It was here that she met the love of her life, her late husband George, who was a student at King's College at the time. Many of her collegiate weekends were spent watching George play football for the Monarchs. Ginger earned her bachelor's degree in education in 1962, putting her on the path to a long and rewarding career teaching in elementary schools in and around Akron, Ohio. Ginger says she and George reflected often on their college experiences and recognized that the gifts of knowledge and ethical values received during this time led not only to successful career paths, but to fulfilled lives as well, something that we aspire to for all our students. Um, we honor them and thank them for paying it forward. And what better way to do that than to hear from Stacy, uh, a young student mother who is the 2022 recipient of the Virginia Donlin Scholarship, one of Miss Recordia's best and brightest, Stacy McCarter. And Stacy and I got to know each other first, I think just out on the street, on Lake Street. I was running and she was driving by with her kids and we got to stop and had a really nice talk. Uh, and she's just, a, uh, she's just a light for all of us here at the university. We see that. Uh, Every time, every time I've interacted with you, anyhow, it's just been wonderful. Stacy is an early childhood and special education major from St. Louis, Missouri, who with her three children will graduate from the Ruth Matthews <clears throat> Borger Women with Children program this May. Congratulations, Stacy. 
Stacy's going to come up and share her story with us. And so thank you very much, Stacy, for being here with us today. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> But that's probably not likely. So <laughs> just warning you ahead of time. Um, I want to say good morning to all of you. Um, it is such a pleasure to be here. I kept saying today, like, I'm just pinching myself, like, is this real? Is this real? Is this real? Um, I am just so honored. Um, I am so full of gratefulness. I am so thankful um, beyond measure. I want to thank all of you and this amazing university, uh, Sandy, Catherine, um, Sister Jean, who's not here, but she she's the one that founded our program, um, Dr. Myers, of course, and just there's so many names that I can't think of all the names, and I wrote them down, but I don't want to take too long on it. Um, but I'm so grateful, and I am so very, very grateful for Ginger, is what you may know her by, but Miss Virginia, she is absolutely amazing, and actually having the opportunity to sit with her and talk with her and know her story just brings my life and my story into a full circle. And it speaks to my faith in such a way that it brings me to tears. So all morning I've just been over there like, okay, it's time to eat, food's gonna help. <laughs> and it did, cause it was good. <laughs> um, but now I wanna tell you, you know, before I can talk about how this moment and this present time, I wanna backtrack and give you a little bit of how I got here. So the story can be long or it can be short, but since I'm pressed for time, I wanna try to make it short. I was back home um, with my three children, divorced, um, had a very difficult relationship, uh, a marriage, and um, found myself just desiring to go back to school. So I was doing that. I was trying to go back to school. I was working full time. I was volunteering at church and Girl Scouts and everything I could do because that's what I do. I love serving. That's in my spirit. And um, I just was in a difficult place with finances and trying to raise the children, trying to work and desiring a better education and a better life for my children. And um, my pastor of my church, she saw that and she did everything she could. So she would let me come to church on um, Wednesday nights or Tuesday or Monday nights when there was like choir rehearsal or a different thing going on at church. And she said, well, the nursery is open. You know, someone could come in, you know, and watch your children while you go in another part of the church and study. So I said, wow, thank you so much. Like that was just incredible. No one has ever done that for me, ever. And I just thought like, how awesome. So I'm like, I'm gonna just keep striving. I'm gonna keep going, doing everything I can. But I still faced financial difficulties to the point where I wasn't gonna be able to afford daycare anymore. And then I was gonna lose my job because I didn't, I didn't have anyone to watch my children. And I couldn't keep up going to school because I needed to work. So it was just the hardest place in my life. And I wanted to give my children so much and I wanted to be there for them, but I just couldn't. And my pastor, she was going through um, some some things and she was going uh, medical things and she was visiting the Mercy Center in St. Louis and she was waiting to be seen and she came across this pamphlet and in the pamphlet or it was like a brochure it was a story about the women with children program and she said immediately in her spirit she heard my name and she was like, I gotta tell Stacy. So she told she told her husband, and then she called me up, and she's like, on Sunday, I want to see you after church. I was like, <laughs> uh, I, I 
think I gotta leave church early this Sunday. <laughs> and she was like, no, no, it's, it's, not, it's not a big issue. Just come see me after church. So I went to see her after church. Uh, we're sitting on the first row uh, of the pew in the sanctuary. And she's like, I got something for you. <laughs> and she was very calm and cool about it. And she said, um, it's about this program, and she went on to tell me, and then she wraps it up saying, well, it's in Pennsylvania. And I was like, huh? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. I gotta do what works. You know, I know this area, and I can try to find help or whatever, you know, with things. And she said, well, just take it and look at it. Just take it and read it. So I say, okay. So through a series of divine interventions, because, you know, I, my mind was made up. I wasn't coming. I was like, nope, that's too far. I don't know these people. Like, it's, it's not going to work out. And, but a series of things happened that I definitely was like, this is God. This is God calling me. This is God leading me. And I had chills down my spine because nobody has ever heard of Dallas, Pennsylvania. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Listen, <laughs> it, it's just, it's not a thing, okay? <laughs> So, so when I came across someone who did, I was like, wow, God, you're really calling me. Okay, I'm going to go check this, read it, and, and fill out the application. So I did. I went home. I grabbed it. I f went online, started to fill out the application. <sighs> At the end of the application, it says, list the children that you have and it gave two slots. I have three children. And I began to feel just so sick in my spirit because my third child was not a planned child. And it was, it was very difficult time in my life because I was like, I'm already a single mother, you know, I already have uh, two children, you know, and bills and everything, but I truly believe in life and therefore he is here. And I kept saying, well, what am I going to do? Because I need this program. I can't, I can't make it another month you know, or another two months. Next year, I'm going to be in a shelter. Next year, I'm, it's, it's not going to be a next year for us. What am I going to do? I have three kids. And I kept thinking, like, you know, well, why did you, you do what you did? Like, you should have, like, just feeling so mad and angry and sad with myself. And I, at that point, I called my pastor. And I was like, see? <laughs> they don't even take people with three kids, mothers with three kids. Why did you, you know, she's like, calm down, it's okay. You know, give them a call. And I'm like, okay, God, well, you, you have these series of like divine interventions that happened that I cannot say was coincidental. Coincidental. It was definitely God's presence moving in my life, telling me to go and fill out this application and come to this program. And I call and I talk on the phone to different people and they're like, you sound so familiar. It's something about you. And I'm just like, hmm, okay. <laughs> and that, and uh, Catherine Polito gets on the phone and she's like, cause I'm like, I, you know, I really am intrigued by your program. I feel like this would be a good fit for me. This is something I definitely need right now. I will give it my best. I will give it my all. I will do everything I can. And she's like, hold on a second. And I don't know if she went to check to see what was wrong with the website or what, but she came back on the phone and she said, I just wanted to let you know that we are now taking mothers with three children. I just was like, wow, this is about to happen. This is happening for us. Our lives are going to forever be changed, and I'm going to give it my all. Everything I got, I'm going to put into it, and it will be that I will graduate. And I'm here now, four years later, stepping into graduation as of May. Everything from that day forward, God has moved mountains, have open doors have provided for us in ways that I never could have imagined. I have not had to need for anything. I went from needing for everything to not having to need for anything. And we all went through the pandemic. 
it's still kind of lingering, but we made it through. But it is because of all of you, especially you, Miss Virginia. Because of you, my children will see me graduate. I didn't see my mom graduate, nor my sisters, nor my aunts, nobody in my family. I am the, I will be the first college graduate. I, not only is my life changed and my children's life changed, but even my family, my siblings, they are learning and growing and feel inspired because of the path I'm in. But it's because of you. You had faith in me and didn't even know me. I'm just this little girl from St. Louis that had a dream to go to college one day. And you and your, great, your generosity, your passion, your faithfulness brought me to the point to where that dream became my reality. And now it's a reality for my children. And that is just mind blowing to me. I sat with my daughter and we talk about what college do you wanna to go to? I never had those conversations with my mom. I never had that with my siblings. Our lives are different for the better and they will continue to be. And because of that, I'm even more inspired to be a contributor. As the years grow, I will give more and more and not, maybe there's times that I can't give financially, but I will give my time. I will give my prayers. I will give my service as much as I can because this university has taught me a lot about service, about justice, about hospitality, about mercy. Not only are those things that, that is being taught, those are things that are felt and are welcome to me. I am so grateful. I am so grateful, I am so grateful for you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I truly pray, I truly pray that God blesses you with the desires of your heart, that he rewards you beyond measure for your faithfulness to him, for your faithfulness to your community, for your faithfulness in your family. We love you and we thank you. It is my honor, <laughs> now it is my honor, true honor, to introduce you to Miss Virginia Emershaw. Yes. Stacy, you are amazing. Stacy wrote me a little letter thanking me for this scholarship and telling me that she was going to graduate from Misericordia in May with a degree in early childhood education. And I thought this is all coming from up here because I spent 30 years in first grade in my teaching career and I loved it so much. I have always been grateful for the education I received at what was then college Misericordia. So I thank you, Stacy, for your introduction, and uh, good afternoon to all of you. It's so nice to be back on the campus of College Misericordia after 60 years. <laughs> and after 60 years, I can see that the heart of mercy is beating as strongly as ever with love, kindness, and compassion, both for its students and its good works in the community. <clears throat> I'm very happy to be invited here uh, today to celebrate Scholarship Recognition Day. As a member of the class of 62, I earned my degree with the aid of a scholarship. My degree enabled me to experience my dream and pursue a very rewarding career and a successful career as an elementary school teacher. And for that, I am very, very grateful. Today, I'm extremely pleased to congratulate Stacy. 
the recipient of the 2022 Women with Christ uh, Children's Scholarship, a scholarship program that I am very pleased to support. This spring, Stacy will be awarded a degree in early childhood education and special education. And I know that you join me in wishing her great success and the blessing of many years of enjoyable teaching experiences. Congratulations, Stacy. I also thank God for the wonderful missions Ms. Recordia students conduct in the community. Not so long ago, Ms. Recordia's occupational therapy students were assigned a task to connect with senior citizens in the area that were able to teach them a skill. <clears throat> My older sister, Patricia, was confined to her apartment after suffering a stroke. She lived in Kingston. She had limited mobility after that stroke. She had an introverted personality and spent the bulk of her days home alone knitting. One day at my home in Ohio, I received a phone call from Patricia. To my delight, she announced that she was preparing to welcome two Misericordia students to her home to teach them to knit. She was so excited and so thrilled, it really brought her out. And to welcome these two girls, that she, she put together these little gift bags of knitting necessities and got all ready for them. This was the start of a years long friendship that included pizza parties, trips to the yarn shop, decorating Patty's Christmas tree, and of course, knitting. The students even took her to a year end volunteer recognition luncheon where Patty received a certificate for mentoring those misericordia students and got her picture in the paper to boot. <laughs> Patricia's students continued to visit her for many years after they graduated. They visited during her hospitalizations and they visit her, visited her at her nursing facilities. Uh, all the while, knitting and chatting and boosting her spirits. My sister's interaction with these two young women and those that followed in the program was not only enjoyable for her, it was transformative. There was, it was just such a joy to see the change in her and the joy that these students brought her. With the kindness, joy, and compassion they brought to my sister, they were a true blessing. For these two amazing students and uh, those that came after and the occupational therapy instructor who initiated the community outreach program I will always be very grateful. And I'm also grateful to be here with you today to celebrate Scholarship Recognition Day on this beautiful campus. I have to admit, when I came up, <laughs> drove up through the gate, I didn't really, or the arch rather, I didn't even recognize the campus. <laughs> it was so beautiful. <laughs> so um, I thank you, my alma mater. Ms. Recordia, may your beautiful, merciful heart beat on forever. Ginger, on behalf of the entire Ms. Recordia community and the, the Stacys of the future. We thank you for your benevolence and are happy to recognize the Virginia Donlan Class of 1962 Scholarship as our honored scholarship this year. Thank you, and here is a token of our appreciation. Thank you, Dr. Myers. Thank you very much. I would now like to introduce Rodrigo Vani, a junior originally from Brazil, who has a double major in business administration and philosophy and hails from Brazil. Rodrigo will offer the closing prayer. Thank you. 
We give thanks for your wonderful presence that allowed us to be here today. For all the generosity of our benefactors and donors, we give thanks. For the Sisters of Mercy, we give thanks. We ask a special blessing upon our Misericordia community, friends, alumni, and benefactors as we strive to live in the charisms of mercy, justice, service, and hospitality. May the spirit of love, peace, and compassion continue to bless us this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Glenn. Glenn. <laughs> what, what, what amazing young people we have in our student body. Just yeah. to sit with them and hear their stories and hear them speak up here with such passion, just it's, it's why I do this thing I do for all these years. Um, I'm Glenn Bozinski. I'm the Vice President of Enrollment Management here at the University. Uh, it's a privilege for me to be here today representing those of us who have the very important trust of matching Misericordia University's endowed and named scholarships bestowed upon us on the university by our donors who so graciously and generously support these students' education and the young people and their families who have so significantly benefited from that support. It's exciting to us to have been a part of building the bridges between those of you in the room today. Our role is to make sure that we make the best possible choices on behalf of our donors to find the most worthy recipients of these awards. In other words, to use your very generous gifts where they can do the most good. While in many cases you are meeting each other for the very first time, for those of us who have the privilege of knowing you, the benefactor, and you, the recipient of that generosity, we know that these matches can be transformational. We've, we've heard it today. We can't even begin to count the number of times in which that match has been a student's saving grace, so to speak. The difference between a student's aspirations of enrolling or maintaining their enrollment at this amazing institution and their ability to actually do so. We are forever indebted to you, our endowed and named scholarship donors, for the opportunities that you have given our students. For the students here today, you likewise have an opportunity. I'm confident that you fully understand how fortunate you are to be here today. Surely you've worked hard, and hard work inspires reward. But, you've, but, you've also, but you're also indebted to many people, certainly your families who have, who have nurtured you and sacrificed for you for so many years, your teachers and others in your life who have encouraged and supported you to succeed. And certainly to the scholarship donors present here today who have made, made your journey that little bit easier. And I hope you feel to the institution itself, soon to be your alma mater for many of you, for Stacy and others this, uh, this spring and others in a year or two. Today, you're benefiting from the generosity of those seated at your table and, and others uh, who are so connected to our university. In five, 10, 15 years from now, after you've walked across that stage, settled into your lives and careers, please remember that day in 2022, this day, when completion of your college education and the movement into your life beyond, beyond it were made much more manageable because of the people who perhaps you never even met before today. Regardless of that, sight unseen, as Stacy said, they believed in your ability to make a difference. Remember that when years from now you have the opportunity, in whatever way that presents itself, to help that unknown student who could really use that help. Earlier, I referred to our work uh, in the area of stewardship of these scholarships. Before I, before I sign us off today, I truly, though, want to acknowledge two people who make this work happen. I'm engaged in it and help oversee it, but the two people who really do this work, uh, one who couldn't be with us here today, Sylvia Moss, who's my assistant director of enrollment management, who spends much of her time making those matches between the donors, the scholarship, and the student, and Lisa Malcolm, who's here today, our director of advancement services, who works with Sylvia on the IA side. <laughs> They work so hard to make this happen, to find everything that the donor intended and match it with a student who perfectly fits that scholarship. Uh, the work is, is tireless and often thankless, but today let's thank them, so thank you all. Um, I almost lost my, yeah. <laughs> so in closing, I want to thank you all for being here, and I hope that each and every one of you go out and continue the wonderful work that brought you here today. So thank you. We
I've got one more thing I've been asked to read. Uh, we do have a photographer here today, the multi-talented J.B. Earl in the back, um, who would be happy to take any photos between donor and benefactor if the donors, or benefactors and students, if you'd like to get a photo with your donor, with your student, please see J.B. and, and Leilani and they'll manage that outside in the lobby. And back to Dan. <laughs> Thanks, Glenn. And I, I just wanted to give Sister Pat a second to come up here. She'd like to say a couple of words on behalf of the Sisters of Mercy. Pat? Thank you. Uh, you probably noticed that my name is not in the program, but that has not stopped me from speaking. <laughs> Before I say what I really want to say out of my heart, I just want to tell you one quick little story. <clears throat> As many of you know, I've taught here, for, I taught at Misericordia for close to a million years, and uh, it has been an honor and a pleasure. Uh, I had one class of uh, students, and it was around Mercy Day, September 24th, and of course, we Mercy celebrate very well. And I'm telling them the story about how the Ku Klux Klan burned crosses on our campus about 1924, 1925. I don't know, Kathleen, you were probably here at the time. <laughs> oh, because because according to, well, I'll tell you. So this one student says to me, hey, sister, were you scared? <laughs> I said, uh, hey, buddy, you just flunked this course. <laughs> uh, yes, Kathleen, we were together. <laughs> okay. But what, what I would like to say on behalf, uh, on behalf of the Sisters of Mercy, and I know we have Sister Mary and Francis back there. Would you please stand? <laughs> and on behalf of the Sisters of Mercy, I want to thank all of you here today and the numerous, numerous folks who carry on the legacy of the Sisters of Mercy. Without you, we will not be able to see our legacy live on and on and on. As you know, the Sisters of Mercy, as all other religious communities, are seeing diminishment in the numbers. But my great hope, and I see it here so well, is that even though the numbers may be going down, the legacy will live on forever through those folks that we've impacted personally, number bazillion, bazillion, a bazillion of people that have caught the legacy of the Sisters of Mercy through you, the lives you live. And the Sisters of Mercy are very, very grateful that we will not have lived in vain, that the legacy of Catherine McCauley, I could, Kathleen, you're making me cry now, that the legacy of, of our founders, Catherine McCauley, will live on long after we have gone to our heavenly reward. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you.